Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Hyperspace Weekly. We've got an extra special treat for you Star Trek fans out there today. So grab yourself a glass of Canar, and I'll see you inside. Okay, so a couple of months ago, I got the once-in-a-lifetime chance to sit down with Trek stars Robert Picardo, Ethan Phillips, Vaughn Armstrong, and Casey Biggs in a unique setting, a cruise ship. It was like a mini convention with 200 Star Trek fans on a boat. Now, this show isn't about the cruise. You can see all of those adventures on February the 10th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on our Cruise Trek special, and believe me, you won't want to miss it. We're going to show you some stuff to whet your appetite, but today's hyperspace features the candid and in-depth conversations I got to have with these four gentlemen on the ship to get their thoughts and anecdotes about the time they spent on Trek and what they're up to now. Roll it. We put together a Star Trek convention on a cruise ship, and it just brings people together on a real personal level, as opposed to, you know, your usual land-based convention where there's thousands of people showing up. So you get to dine with the actors and, and interact a lot more on a personal level, which uh, makes it that much more enjoyable for everyone. No, I don't mean to pick on Alabama, although they found a new use for, uh, for, wool, uh, for sheep in Alabama, wool. The snorkeling was good, and uh, had a great time doing that, and. Um, the gambling was a lot of fun. Did you win anything? No. No, in fact, I lost $20 in the stamp machine. <laughs> How's this particular cruise been for you? It's been great. You know, the, the good thing about the cruises, other than all these great sights you get to see, uh, are the fans. They are just so sweet, you know, and they're so appreciative of us being here. When a lovely flame dies, where did you go? You're the flame. Smoke gets in your eyes. It's been great. We had a wonderful time. These things are a lot of fun because they're a big family, and you see people that you've seen on previous ones. Everyone's there to have a good time. You know, Sunday could have... So I used to think cruising was for old people, so i am either gotten very wise or gotten very old, one of the two. Uh, I just, all of a sudden, I, I, I love this thing. I've got the Enterprise Blue, blue as I can be. We only want to be your partners, to do what the nations of Earth have learned to do to work together in common cause. You first got involved with Trek about, what, 17 years ago? Has it been that long? I think it was seven, about 17 years, 80, 87, 88 or so. I've been saying 15. I didn't even know that the character was an alien because they gave no indication in the script. They said he was a humanoid. And I hadn't watched enough Star Trek to know that I thought a humanoid was like a human with like an oid hanging <laughs> off the, the neck or something. I didn't know. You, Jim Hadar. Who are you to treat a Cardassian citizen like that? Jim. Damar. I got called for the audition. Uh, had two lines. They're in range, sir, and fire. And I said, Oh, uh, we could have a, we could have a, an extra do this. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. I was asked to read for the doctor, but uh, I didn't get it. I, I, I read the scenes out of context. I read the character description, which was colorless, humorless, a computer program of a doctor. Hmm. Now, that didn't sound like a bundle of fun for a potential seven years, so um, I, I decided to pass on it. Uh, Bob Picardo auditioned for Neelix, and um, he... Uh, he auditioned for Neelix and the Doctor, and I auditioned for Neelix and the Doctor. I saw Neelix kind of as a, as a, a, a guy in a 12-step program who, <laughs> who really, you know, had a lot of weaknesses, but he wanted always to be his better self, but he would kind of slide back into weakness. In the pilot, the Doctor was very small, so I think he was more intrigued with Neelix. A replacement must be requested as soon as possible. I am programmed only as a short-term emergency supplement to the medical team. But, of course, the Doctor became a much larger character than Neelix over the years. Uh, they love to write for um, artificial intelligence on, on Star Trek. 
So he, he got he hit a really nice roll. Not that Neil wasn't, but I think he was happy the way it turned out. I first auditioned for the role of Riker in, in the very first uh, pilot of Next Gen, and they saw me three or four times for that, but uh, just wasn't clicking really. <laughs> I went back and I auditioned again, and as I walked into the room, they said, that was a really, really intelligent reading. Three words, four range. words, they're in range, they're fire. And I got the job, which I did, and I, first day on the set, three hours of makeup, never been in that kind of makeup before. The director came over and whispered to me, he said, you got big plans for this character. I call on Cardassians everywhere to rise up, rise up and join me. I need you to be my army. If we stand together, nothing can oppose us. I then auditioned about four more times for different roles. The first one was Chorus, Heart of Glory. Uh, this was the first Klingon with a forehead other than Worf. And uh, being a Vietnam vet and something of an animal, I thought, you know, if, uh, if I don't get this one, I might as well give it up. And uh, thank God uh, I got that role, which, as I understand it, had something to do with the success of the series in that first year because it didn't have a whole lot of action in it. So they needed something to inspire adrenaline, and they did a Klingon run. You are no Klingon! Perhaps not. I've been adding to Laxian spices to broaden your palate. My palate is sufficiently broad. The first time I knew that he would be different was at the final audition when I was waiting to go in to do my final reading for the producers. And uh, the woman sitting next to me uh, was auditioning for the captain. And um, she, she said to me, she said, by the way, have you seen uh, sketches of Neelix? I said, no. She said, he looks a, 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 little, like, a little bit like a hedgehog. And I went, what? And then they said, Mr. Phillips. And I went in with that image in my head. I'm a doctor. Whether my patient is human or Romulan, I'll do everything in my power to save him. You're welcome to assist me if you'd like. No one had ever heard me read the doctor's lines. And I was fairly irreverent, which is, uh, it surprised me that they hired me, because you don't, you don't mess around with the Star Trek text once you get the job. But I did ad-lib a couple times in the audition, including my final ad-lib. After my last scripted line, which was, I believe someone has failed to terminate my program, I took a long, deadpan look at all the people sitting and watching me in the room and said, I'm a doctor, not a nightlight. And uh, got a big laugh, walked out, and was hired about 24 hours later. I believe someone has failed to terminate my program. Please respond. I'm doing the shot, you know, I take a drink of Oh, God, it was just terrible. I had to look like it tasted good, so hell of an actor. Shields are down. I've got the sample commander, and it's stable. Don't get out of here. I got the impression that when there were issue shows, that they would use Neelix. For the issues, I mean, there was Jatrell and, and, mm -hmm. and Mortal Coil. Mortal Coil, where yeah. You, where you died and yeah. had to deal with that. A wonderful oh. show. He's dead. <laughs> 